These men are nearing the finish line, having walked three kilometers through a river with 25 kilos on their backs, heaving a slab of concrete weighing 100 kilos. It's no wonder some lips are quivering. This is just one test commandos have to pass to join the Afghan National Army Special Forces. First, they will be smart and then very strong. When we're recruiting for the Special Forces, we're going to the Commando Battalion and we select a uh, recruit from the Commando Battalion. If those people not have education, no, no good knowledge, they never can be a special person. It's a three-day selection process where 230 candidates battle it out to make the grade. <laughs> Within the branches of the Afghan security forces, they don't come much more elite than special forces. Special forces special <laughs> Taking on insurgents isn't the only job these men will be required to do. They're also needed for diplomacy. Every candidate is known by a number. Number four is being marked down as one of the stronger ones. We have to be strong physically and mentally also. And uh, mentally is uh, very good in a special force. Uh, if uh, a person doesn't have uh, good mentally, he doesn't come, become a special force. The Afghan commandos and special forces have recently been credited for killing hundreds of insurgents during operations in the east. Backed by the Afghan army, they'll be the ones doing much of the fighting once foreign combat troops leave in 2014. There's a feeling of confidence, but one Afghan trainer here says they need more international help to provide heavy weapons, helicopters and basic equipment. That's not much of a concern to these men right now. More immediate for them is getting through the special forces selection. They can walk around 10, 20 kilometers with rucksack, with ammunition, any kind of ammo. They can do that or not. We have to be sure they are really a strong man. These soldiers are Afghanistan's best of the best. They are the country's own special forces unit, which has, for a while now, been receiving equipment and training from their U.S. counterparts. Members are selected from elite units within the police and army. At their training camp on the outskirts of Kabul, the Afghan special forces practice conducting raids. They use flash grenades to get residents to come out of their compounds. After having searched them, the men enter inside the building. Special forces have carried out 3,800 raids against insurgent targets in the past year with the help of coalition forces. In 91% of these raids, no shots are fired, according to ISAF. There is only one percentage, uh, 1.36 uh, um, um, uh, civilian casualties and 3,000 operations. But it's unacceptable because the enemy also used the people um, as a shield. So they played a greater role. Many of these raids are carried out at night. Coalition forces say they are one of their most effective weapons in the fight against insurgency. Afghan President Hamid Karzai, however, has called for them to end. It's an issue which both parties are in discussions over. The night operations which we are conducting are successful from the beginning of the special forces until now. And we did not have any civilian casualties. We have killed insurgents. We did not hurt civilians. Though the Americans were involved in creating this unit, 
more and more now they are stepping out on their own. Soon we will start our platoon size independent operations by the help of uh, assistance of uh, coalition forces, but our mainly operations will be independent in future. Many challenges lie ahead, but U.S. and Afghan officials are confident this elite unit will provide a significant contribution to the country's stability when combat troops leave Afghanistan in 2014. These are the top security forces of Afghanistan, known as the National Directorate of Security, or NDS, in a joint training exercise with a quick reaction force of the Afghan National Police. Today, in Rumur Valley in Bamiyan, a province in the heart of Afghanistan, the NDS and the Afghan police are taking part in an exercise demonstrating to provincial council members and other high-ranking officials their abilities to fight insurgents. Um, and not only me, but uh, all the, uh, the members of uh, NSF that they were here present, uh, they believe that uh, they, have, uh, uh, they have got enough capability. We, they have to work more, uh, they have to work uh, hardly uh, to, to, to update their capability every day. But they were very good. Bamiyan is one of the more secure provinces of Afghanistan. But the area police chief says not having enough security forces to patrol its provincial borders means Taliban coming from troubled neighboring provinces can cause problems for the people of the region. Uh, uh, like many other provinces in Afghanistan, Bamiyan had until recently a provincial reconstruction team, or PRT, which provided security, governance and development assistance in the province. New Zealand led this PRT with contributions from Malaysia and the United States. Although the PRT has recently closed, for more than 18 months the province's security has been the responsibility of the Afghan National Security Forces. The local police chief says having a close relationship with the NDS is crucial to provide stable security for the region. هغه په لس ورځو کې مونږ هغه سر ته رسو په عادي سر باندې نیول تر اخرین پرته پورې هغه یې هغه تمرینات سر ته رسي چې په هغه کې ډېر سخیلا تمرینات دي په هغه کې وزن یې ټوپک یې هم هر شی چې ورسره یې همغه دېرش کیلو وزن سره په دغه لس ورځو کې که چېرته دی وتوانې ده هغه ځانګړو ځواکونو ته لاره پیدا کړي که ونه توانې ده هغه دې یو اردو ته بیا کوماندو خصوصیت دا ده چې دوی سالیر ساعت ایلا دو ورزی دا پارا دوی وظیفه لری وظیفه دیر مختصر وظیفه لری کلا چه دوی تا وظیفه ورکو لکی که پا حقا سانیا آجیلانا وظیفه ایجرا کهی او بیر تا وظیفه چه پا خفل تسته ورسی دل حرکت کهی رازی اخفل کهتی دا دا زنگور دو زاکونو آغا تمرینات چه کهی پا خصوصا دا پا شپاو ورس که لک پودات سخته لیکن مونگ دشپی تمرینات لرو پو آسا کردو اردو که ایاغا دشپی تمرینات نلری تعلیم و تربیه پیشرفته کماندو دا تای دوازده هفته که شامل ترنگای مختلف است بالای پرسنل پیش برده میشه که شامل تعلیمات ماسره و تناشی است انداخته پیشرفته است تمرینات الیکوپتر است درسته شو است آشنایی با تمام سلا و تایزات کمندو است که میتونن توازایی خدا در هر نوا شرایط شب روز آزای جوی محقانه انجام بود آقا باید پیزیکی دی برخورت نباید تیتی باید پیزیکی قوت جیگی او عملی نی پسط لیکن پا عمل مفتدانی او روحی خی و تندوستی او باورال اوسیگ و خیار اوسیگی خصوصا پیزیکی قوی باید جیگی که تا تو جستامای کماندو 
بعد از برآمدن نیروهای اطلاف از افغانستان کاملا آمادگی دارند در قسمت مبارزه با دشمنان مردم افغانستان هیچ نوع کدام مشکلی وجود ندارد همیشه در شب روز در هر نوع اراضی آماده دفاع و طرف راست The Afghan Crisis Response Unit, or CRU, well known for their aid in containing and neutralizing high-profile urban attacks in Kabul, here prepare to capture and detain suspects in a recent kidnapping and murder of an Afghan interpreter. <laughs> دراپور کتیسیالو مشاورینی که از مزایا مردمی مشترک کردند سایر آباد، مسولی سایر آباد، مسولی سایر آباد. Not just Afghans, but ISAF mentors from special operations forces or soft teams boarded these helicopters, and it wasn't just men. but women as well, like this female Norwegian SAF member who mentors the women of the Afghan CRU. We are not going to be able to do women in Afghanistan. We are going to be able to do women in Afghanistan. We are going to be able to do women. This female CRU officer said she doesn't hesitate to engage in night operations. What are you doing? We are going to be able to do women. We are going to be able to do women. We are going to be able to do women. We are going to be able to do women. We are going to be able to do women. We are going to be able to do women. We are going to be able to do women. We are going to be able to do women. But unlike this woman, who has been a member of the CRU for three years, some of the Afghan troops on this operation have been training for far less. So it is a high-risk, learning-on-the-job mission, with both Norwegian mentors and Afghan instructors aiding the newer recruits. But experienced or not, every commando aboard this mission is heading into a threat-filled situation and must perform. The first step is to call out the residents of a compound, or get their attention. If those inside fail to open the door, the assault team blows it. This heavy gate, which was in fact the entrance to two combined compounds, took two charges to blow. The assault team, comprised mostly of Afghans but with some Norwegian mentors, enter the first northern compound. Searching all rooms and isolating fighting age men. Intelligence sources reported that the suspected insurgents had moved from this compound to the next one, and the teams were alerted of a shooter on the roof and a potential suicide bomber. But the compound was cleared without incident, and the group of ten fighting-age men were assembled. There was compelling evidence found at the scene, which cannot be shown linking at least one of the men to the kidnapping. But during the subsequent questioning, the stories of each man didn't match up about who owned the evidence. So the commandos decided to take all 10 men into custody, which is legal for up to 72 hours before official charges must be made, according to Afghan law. An Afghan member of the Ministry of Interior, who's known as the prosecutor, had the final say on who was detained. It was necessary to convince the prosecutor of what in the West we would call due cause for detaining each one. Ultimately, the prosecutor agreed that it was legitimate to take all the men, except for one of the least likely of the suspects, who had requested that he ought to be left behind to care for the women and children in the compound. While this deliberation took place, the CRU commandos recorded biometric information of the suspects, including fingerprints, retinal scans, and headshots and then ran them against an online database to check for any other criminal or insurgent activity on record. With the Afghan prosecutor's approval, the detainees were let out and we all returned to the pickup points. 